Last month I started my own series of videos in which I discussed and revealed a lot of aspects that were deleted and just plain cut from the Scream franchise. As it happens I managed to get a couple of extra scripts from different movies and exclusive interviews with Kevin Williamson throughout most of his career as a screenwriter. So I'm going to be delving further into these scripts to bring you guys even more deleted aspects from the movies that didn't manage to see the light of day. To make sure you don't miss out on this awesome Scream trivia, be sure to hit subscribe and make sure you sign up for notifications so you don't miss a single update. You can also check out the episodes I've already covered in the playlist listed on screen. In today's video, we're taking a look at Kevin Williamson's original ending for Scream 2, which had intentions of building into his version of Scream 3, which would lead to the return of Stu Marker, allegedly. So how was Stu featured in Scream 2 exactly? Well, I'll get to that shortly. But first let me give you guys some behind the scenes info on the franchise. It all relates to this closing scene in 2, don't worry. So when Kevin Williamson sold the script to Dimension Films for Scream 1996, he did so with the intentions of making two sequels. He famously stated in a podcast interview several years ago that most companies were uninterested in the project, but Dimension were on board, providing he could sign up for a free movie deal, to which he provided a very basic outline for what he believed could work as a trilogy of movies. So when Scream 2 went into production, the drama behind the scenes was huge. Script leaks, issues with the rewrites and so on. It's hard to track down the script for 2, especially the script that wound up being the eventual movie, as most scripts you'll find online were the leaked original draft for the movie. Now when Scream 3 entered pre-production, Kevin Williamson wrote out a brief draft for what he wanted to be a third and final movie on the franchise, which would allegedly see a group of teenagers who had formed a ghost face cult and were intending on murdering Sydney as some sick sort of revenge. This would also allegedly have seen the return of Matthew Lillard as Stu Marker. So with this in mind, Kevin Williamson intended on dropping subtle hints in Scream 2 that this story wasn't over. One of the major hints was actually in a deleted scene from the movie that actually saw one of the cult members of the Ghostface group watching Sydney during the climax of the movie. The shot was eventually edited out of the movie, but the behind the scenes photos exist to prove this was actually filmed. Um, this is actually the first take. This was actually a rehearsal. We had originally done a dissolved in between, but the one, the shot that we had dissolved to actually had the ghost in the tower. And then was debating that uh, perhaps we should not be so bold. <laughs> On the nose. So if this was Kevin Williamson's intention and adding to the we didn't want to be so bold, this ghost face was obviously intended to set up Scream 3. However, the most interesting thing about this is that at this point, there was no Roman bridge yet meaning that this scene was placed in there by Kevin Williamson to set up the sequel. So if we just keep all that in mind, is it ridiculous to assume there may be subtle hints that this Ghostface cult was observing and stalking Sydney during Scream 2? Was every single appearance of Ghostface Mickey and Mrs. Loomis? It's all fascinating to hear because the stab craze was huge in this particular movie. So realistically speaking, the cult members could be hidden within plain sight. Maybe during the climax of Kevin's 3, we'd have seen how perhaps she was being followed heavily from the events of 2. One other scene this could have likely happened was in the Cassandra production scene, where Sydney is attacked by Ghostface. The only reason I believe this could have been a third person is simply because Mrs. Loomis was stalking Gale at this point, and Mickey was in the editing room. Also, this scene was incredibly foreshadowing for the movie, and Towards the end of that sequence, there is a select few teenagers who take their masks off and they are just teenagers under the mask and I could be reaching here but you never know, maybe this was a hint at what was to come in the very last fight that Sydney was going to have with Ghostface. Now, some of you may talk this idea away but remember, the shot of the extra Ghostface was shot meaning they absolutely intended on there being another ghost face roaming around at this point. The statement that they didn't want to be too bold with placing ghost face in the final shot is because they simply didn't want to pre-predict a third movie would happen. Now eventually the Columbine massacre led to Kevin's vision for Scream 3 being scrapped entirely, and so we never got to hear the true intention of this particular shot of Ghostface, nor did we get to see how it tied into Scream 3. 
Do you guys have any theories? You know, same as mine, stream marker perhaps? I'd love to hear your thoughts below. As usual, don't forget to like, share, and please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more awesome Scream trivia. And there is a lot more to come this week. I'll see you guys in the next video.